We're now going to look at another kind of expression, one that is referred to as a Boolean expression. We've already seen what are called arithmetic expressions. Those are expressions that are made up of operators and operands, where the operands are numeric data, like integers and floating point numbers, and the operators are things like addition and subtraction and multiplication, and when we evaluate those expressions, we get numeric results. In the case of the Boolean expression, the idea is that when we evaluate those, we're going to end up with a value from a data type that is called bool. Now, what is the data type bool? Well, just like we have int and float, the data type bool is a representation of what are known as the truth values. However, there are only two. The truth values are true and false. And so the data type bool is a fairly small data type. The value true which is spelled with a capital T, and the value false, which is spelled with a capital F, are the only two items. And notice, just like the integer 34 and the value of 56.78 from the floating point numbers, the values true and false evaluate to themselves. They are the literal values within the data type bool. So one of the things that we can do with Boolean values, just like we could do uh, with integers and floating point numbers, is we could use them in assignment statements. And so, for example, with integers, I can say total is a reference to the int 0. And when I evaluate that in the Python shell, what I get back is the data object that total refers to. I can do the same thing with the Booleans. So I can say, for example, let's let the variable stop be a reference to the value false. Now, in that case, What's going to happen, of course, is that stop is going to be a reference to that new data object. If we look at this in our reference diagram style, what we've just done is to create a new variable and let that variable refer to a data object that has the value false. And as we know, when you have a name for a piece of data and you evaluate that name, so for example, STOP now back in the Python shell, what we get back is the value that stop refers to. And so because stop refers to the data object false, when we evaluate stop, we see the value false show up as the result in the Python interpreter. Now, the most common use for these Boolean values is to be the result of these expressions called Boolean expressions. And the easiest way to create a Boolean expression, other than just having a variable that evaluates to true or false, is to use what's called the relationship operators. And the relationship operators are things that you've seen before. Things like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then we have equal to and not equal to. So the equal to and not equal to are sim symbols that use the equality symbol. There are no spaces, but of course we can't use the single equality symbol for equals because we already use that for assignment. So for example, if I go back to the Python shell and just create a very simple relational expression, I could say for less than 5, and when I evaluate that, it returns true. And if I were to say total equal to 0, it also returns true because total is currently a variable whose value is 0. If I said total not equal to 0, then that would evaluate to false because total happens to be 0. So this type of Boolean expression, this type of relationship expression, when evaluated, will give me back either a true or a false. Now the other way that I can create a Boolean expression is to use what are referred to as the logic operators. And the logic operators are AND, OR, NOT. Those three operators actually work on the Boolean values and return true and false depending upon the combination. 
And so the easiest way to look at this is just to think about what these three operators might do. So the AND operator works on trues and falses, and it returns a true only if the two operands that it's working on happen to both be true. So for example, using the literal values, if I said true and true, the result would be true. But if I said true and false, the result is false because both have to be true for the result to be true. Now, the more common thing to do, of course, is to use more complicated expressions as part of those logical expressions, as part of those um, operands for the AND operator. So we could do something like this. We could say total is currently equal to zero and three is less than four. And if we look at that, then the two pieces of this expression, total equal to zero, when we evaluate that, well, total is zero, so that's going to be true. Three less than four, well, when we evaluate that, three is less than four, so that's true. So both parts are true. True and true, we're going to find the result then is true. And the same thing is going to hold with or, except in the case of the operator or, one or the other or both can be true for the result to be true. So if the first operand is true, or if the second operand is true, or if they both happen to be true, then the result of the or would be true. So for example, I could say total is currently equal to zero, or four less than three. Now, total equal to zero happens to be true, but of course four less than three is false. But the OR operator simply says, as long as one or the other is true, the result will be true. So when I evaluate that, I end up with true. If both were false, so total not equal to zero, or four less than three, because both of these two operands are false, the OR will therefore return false as its result. And the final operator, the NOT operator, is fairly straightforward. The NOT operator simply returns the opposite of its operand. And so it only takes one truth value, and it simply creates the opposite return result. So NOT TRUE returns FALSE, and NOT FALSE will return TRUE. So for example, if I said NOT TOTAL equal to zero, well, what do we know? total equal to zero returns true, not working on true turns it into false. Now the only other thing that we should think about here is the precedence of these operators. Which operator gets done first, which operator gets done second, and so on. It turns out, and we can kind of see that in this last example, that the relationship operators will always be done before the logical operators. And so in these examples where we had two relationship operators and a logic operator in between, the relationship operators are going to be done first, and then the truth values that appear from those relationship operators are the ones that are anded or ORed together. So if you aren't sure, you can always put in parentheses, parentheses total equal zero and parenthesis 4 greater than 5. Now we've forced these to be done first. They would have been done first anyway because of precedence, but again of course the value is false because even though total equals 0 is true, 4 greater than 5 is false, and for the AND to be true, both would have to be true.